Are you either a sweaty 40 year old with hair that's been unwashed since 1999 or a 19 year old e-girl with hair that feels unwashed due to the amount of cheap hair dye it's been subjected to? Are you an avid consumer of current trends and social media but too scared to admit it so you attach yourself to what's seen as the most edgy current trend? Have you been clickbaited into watching this video due to the e-girl image I use? Well, new metal is the perfect genre for you. Also, I hate you. So what is new metal and why on earth is it suddenly the preferred subgenre of music for people who look like this? The answers to those questions will come in due time, don't you worry. The answer to the second question definitely isn't because a Chinese algorithm told them to, I promise. New metal is the combination of heavy metal with various different genres such as hip hop, funk, industrial and grunge. You may be thinking some of those genres really shouldn't be combined with heavy metal. Well if you think that you'd be correct, that's new metal. One thing that remains relatively unique about the guitars of the new metal is the focus on rhythm as opposed to complexity or atmosphere. This often results in the complete removal of any guitar solos, with the solos being replaced by syncopated, thumpy riffs, as well as abysmal tracksuits and lyrical spiritual individuals. Of course, the guitars are drowned in as much distortion as possible. This is done on purpose. You gotta make sure the listener's eardrums blow out before they're subjected to this dude trying to rap. Although the guitars follow standard metal conventions for the most parts, the other instruments more so follow the themes of the other genres within this witch's cauldron of cringe. At times, drummers are influenced by funk and hip-hop, adding a bit of swing and rhythm to the music, and other times they're just saying it and play blast beats. Bassists stay consistently pretty goddamn funky. I don't have a joke, they just be funky. Another key element of new metal instrumentation is the complete disregard of what instruments actually work within metal. Turntables, samplers, baseball bats, you name it, might as well chuck it in there. I'm sure the mix will be fine. I don't want to have to do this, but we're going to have to cover vocals. For the most part, the vocals follow a pretty generic metal style. Growling, screaming, soy singing, all pretty standard. What remains relatively unique for the genre is the fact that upon listening to a song, you have about a 60% chance to hear somebody who looks like this rap some of the most abhorrent bars known to man. Lyrics are relatively similar to grunge and other more nihilistic subgenres, with topics such as pain, angst and betrayal, although new metal tackles these issues pretty directly, with not as much subtlety. Lyrics can delve into a much more cringe direction though, with some bands sounding like a group of redneck cavemen grunting about alcohol, women and breaking stuff, as opposed to anything with substance. After that overly long description of a genre that's actually pretty easy to understand, let's delve into the history and find out exactly how this genre came to be. As new metal is kind of just a mashup of loads of different Deep. that should probably be left at least 5 metres apart, exploring every artist that laid certain groundworks for this genre would take a very long time, and since this genre has had a resurgence in recent times for some reason, we have a lot to cover so let's get going. I think we should cover the instrumentation first and get to the lyrical spiritual individual Deep. a bit later. The first genre to emerge that would really inspire new metal would be thrash metal, although most of the good bits were completely ignored. All the complicated bits, the solos, the atmosphere, Deep. that guitar heavy, drum fast, boom, yes. Anthrax would be particularly important influential with their collaboration with the hip hop collective Public Enemy, which actually saw members of Anthrax poorly rapping alongside Public Enemy. Although the use of hip hop within rock music has been around since 1986, with Run DMC's collaboration with Aerosmith and the Beastie Boys sampling the likes of Black Sabbath and ACDC, nothing quite captured the essence of what new metal would become, quite like Anthrax and Public Enemy. Around the same time, the development of alternative metal was sprinkling a few elements into the eventual new metal potion. Bands like Helmet would inspire the downtuned riffs, whilst Faith No More would inspire the prevalence of bass alongside a lot of the vocal stylings of new metal. By that I mean. Brands like Primus and Mr. Bungle added a little bit of funk into the mix. Rage Against the Machine would deliver a sound more akin to the future new metal practitioners, with rhythmic guitar experiments alongside funky beats and Zach De La Roca's signature hip hop inspired political fury. So at this point we have all the elements, everything that's needed in theory to create new metal. So what actually started it all off? Korn would grease up their knotted locks, slap on the purple tracksuit, and release their self titled debut in 1994, completely spitting on the glam and hair metal of the years beforehand instead deciding to take the rumblings of rap metal and twisting it into the most abhorrent concoction. They combined down-tuned sludgy riffs, distinct vocals and a focus on rhythm that can only be seen from a band that didn't actually grow up on metal, instead being fans of goth, funk and hip-hop. P.O.D.'s Snuff the Punk actually released earlier that same year and would feature a lot of the stylings of new metal including a lot of the hip-hop elements ignored by Korn. Shortly after new metal embarrassingly thrust its way into a limited amount of mainstream attention, Cold Chamber would release their debut album alongside one of the worst music videos I've ever seen. Cold Chamber would basically take what Korn did and make it a lot worse, although their vocals are more attuned to what new metal would become in the following years. 1997 would also see the release of prominent albums from two of new metal's powerhouses, although they were literally nothing alike, Red Hat Band and Goth Girl Band. Limp Bizkit's debut album would take the new metal formula and make it really stupid, 
taking the instrumentation of metal and combining it with gangster rap and absolutely terrible lyrics that people took seriously for some reason. Around the Fur by Deftones would produce some of the best riffs within the genre if you consider Deftones to actually be new metal. As opposed to inserting funk and hip hop into the metal formula, Deftones would experiment with more shoegazy type and kind of got grouped into new metal due to the popularity aligning with the popularity of new metal time frame wise. What you may notice about new metal is that everyone seems to be wearing really stupid outfits. Red cap, purple jumpsuit, whatever the f*** this is. Despite many of these outfits being the preferred clothing of the musicians, it still held a prominent role in the presentation of the bands. Korn's original look stood out from a lot of what was happening in metal beforehand, resulting in more attention for the band. This led to a bit of a phenomenon, as outfits got more silly, each band had to one-up each other, getting progressively sillier. The band that would take this to its absolute extreme would be Slipknot. You see, during the late 90s, there were only two options for Midwesterners, either or dressing up in Halloween costumes and breaking things. Slipknot chose the latter, and opted to dress in jumpsuits and masks, assigning each of themselves a number to be referred to by fans rather than the name. This gimmick, alongside their debut album, would thrust the band into the new metal scene. The album combined a prominent death metal influence, alongside sampling techniques, turntables, and let's say, interesting percussion. Although around this time copycat bands were beginning to water down and oversaturate the genre, it still remained interesting, with the colourful cast of edgelords producing a sound specifically for the ears of teenagers who opted to wear two stitched together tents as opposed to fitted jeans. Some of the music was pretty heinous, but it aligned itself within the rebellious counterculture enough for it to remain charming and not too annoying. The universe remained calm, until a frosted tips forced to be reckoned with entered the music scene, something none of us expected, Linkin Park. Linkin Park's debut album would see huge success within the mainstream, being the best selling debut album since Guns N' Roses, and we know how good that band is. Linkin Park would take the new metal sound and further popify it. What added to their popularity was their look. No purple Deep. tracksuit, no smelly rubber mask, they essentially just looked like a boy band, and played into this clean cut image for the most part. The mainstream success of this popular side of new metal left little breathing room for the contemporaries, who many of which were unwilling to tone down the sound to appeal to the audience who are now more used to the sound of bands like Linkin Park. I don't mean to disrespect by the way, Linkin Park was actually the first CD I ever bought, so rest in peace. What added to the downfall of the genre were the all too familiar drug issues affecting many of the genre's biggest bands, leading to breakups and a decline in quality. Audience members also started to look at the genre with more disgust, with many individuals taking Limp Biscuit far too seriously and targeting their distaste specifically towards Fred Durst and his style of lyricism. And although System of a Down would release some <laughs> amazing music in the coming years, the commercial success of new metal albums was drastically decreasing, putting the final nail in the coffin for new metal. Many bands would continue down the same path, with varying levels of success. Limp Biscuit would perform relatively terribly sales-wise, Korn would do decently, and Slipknot would go on to be one of the biggest metal bands in the world. So that brings us to the modern day, with new metal being the most relevant it has been in the last 20 years, but why is that? Well, mainly TikTok. One person posts an unfunny or thirst trap video with a song, that spreads, more people listen to it, more people use it, so on, so on. It's what we expect from China's favourite social weapon. But why specifically new metal? I think the best way to explain this is to look at the current state of hip-hop. Look at this dude, this dude, this human incarnation of the coronavirus. They all have very specific and over-the-top looks. People often attach themselves to the image of a person, which explains the popularity of new metal, with many prominent members having over-the-top looks and images. Many Zoomers have probably seen a goth girl dance into corn and immediately had their ADHD riddled brain hyperfixate on the eye-catching and honestly extremely appealing look of many of the bands involved within the genre. It also may be because the music is very catchy and sounds good. Nah, no way, that's, that's no way, it can't be. 